guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming the beauty consumerism tag created by 90s Love Child here on YouTube. I saw some of my YouTube friends film this tag video, so I'm gonna go ahead and film it myself. I will leave the original video as well as the questions down in my description box, so if you are considering picking up this tag and doing it yourself, I tag you. And yeah, without further blabbering, let's get into it. Okay guys, so the first question, how much do you spend on makeup a month? and a year. Is my husband gonna be watching this video? <laughs> uh, I would say if I had to guess, I probably spend $500 a month on makeup. I wouldn't be surprised if it's more. So $500 times 12 is a scary number that I don't want to know. It's about six grand. Yeah, that sounds about right. Do you want to know how much I made on YouTube this year? Not six grand. That's the answer to that question. So, <sighs> number two, do you ever feel guilty about how much you spend on makeup? Yes, sometimes I do because sometimes I definitely overspend. I over, like, I go over my budget plenty of times and I can't keep doing that anymore, I'm done. Like I hate it, I hate being broke, I hate not having extra money saved up for an emergency. So 2020 is gonna be a new year on my channel. Like I'm really gonna focus on what I'm buying. I wanna buy things that I love, that interest me, that I wanna film videos on. Like I made a lot of BH Cosmetics purchases that I did need to make. I just am setting some rules for myself. Like I really wanna do a lipstick no buy for 2020 because I don't need lipsticks. I don't go through them fast enough. So I really want to make a conscious effort to buy less things. I really don't need to buy any more highlighters. I don't need to buy any more bronzers. Like things like that. I really, really, really want to minimize my purchases because my love is eyeshadow palettes. So why am I spending money on dumb shit that I don't need to buy? So yeah, I definitely do feel guilty about what I spend on makeup. Number three, do you get FOMO related to makeup releases? Yes, I do. It's really a problem. So for the longest time in life, I felt like I had a lot of FOMO. You know, when you kind of get older and like your friends are in like cliques and this and that, I used to feel FOMO a lot as far as life goes, but now I definitely feel FOMO for makeup, but it's getting better. I've realized that sometimes if I just ignore something, it will go away. That urge to want does go away. But there are times where I definitely feel FOMO and I'm like, oh. you know, like when I bought the Divine Rose Pat McGrath palette, I was definitely feeling the FOMO. And uh, yeah, I look over at my makeup collection and I'm like, wow, that like, mm, why? Lots of color pop. FOMO, but all of that's gonna change because I just, I, no. I don't care anymore. Like, I only want what I want. I'm not gonna keep buying stuff just to make videos. Number four, do you purchase or keep items simply because they are limited edition? Um, no, I'm not really huge on limited edition. I think I used to be really into the MAC limited edition stuff, but then I kind of got over it. I'm not really into collecting limited edition things. I just like to like what I like and if it happens to be limited edition then I'll still buy it but I'm not like seeking limited edition things. I know there's a lot of people out there that are huge collectors and they buy something and they never swatch it and it just sits in their collection. I'm not one of those people. Like I want to use stuff in my collection and if I don't use it, it's going to get moved on to somebody that will. Number five, would you be willing to pay more money for a sold out product online? Fuck no. Like that's one thing I've never really been tempted to do because like the brand owners say, even like Jeffree Star, he's like, don't buy, don't overpay for things. And I definitely agree, like nothing is worth spending your hard-earned money on. Makeup is not worth spending your hard-earned money on to buy something that's hard to get. Like, no, put that into something more important or if you're into collecting something else, like that makes sense. But don't put your money into buying like sold out limited edition stuff. Like, you know, the Kat Von D palette, um, the Mavita Loca palette. I know so many people that try to buy that thing on like eBay and stuff and spent like hundreds of dollars on a palette. And I'm just like, no, absolutely not. Nope, I won't do it. Number six, do you wish you could spend more or less? 
I wish I could spend more. Like, I wish I had, you know, unlimited amounts of money. I wish that I had a money tree. I wish I could buy you guys makeup too. Shit. Like, if I had, like, fuck you money, I would buy everyone makeup. I'd be like, what's your address? Oh, let me send you this. Like, that's what I would... I would get so much joy out of buying people makeup. It's ridiculous. So, yeah, I wish I could spend more, but I want to spend less because I've definitely made some bad purchasing decisions in my life as far as makeup goes. Like, I literally recently filmed a video with my friend Amy called Makeup That Made Me Feel Like a Clown. And just a reminder that... Sometimes if I don't take a minute to think about things and I just make purchases, I end up making really bad decisions. So I would love to spend more. I wish I had an unlimited budget, but that is not the case. So I would like to spend less on makeup. Number seven, do you feel compelled to buy something when you see it in someone else's collection? Um, I don't really feel compelled when I see it in a collection video. Sometimes in a haul video, if it's a newer product, I'm like, ooh, that looks interesting. But again, those feelings have really kind of settled down in 2019. I think in 2018, that feeling was rampant in my mind, but I've definitely kind of slowed down. I just want to, you know, spend money on other things. I want to be able to, you know, have a nest egg. I want to be able to go on vacation. I want to be able to go to Sephora in LA and not be, you know, pinching pennies um, on a trip. So I think those are kind of where my goals are at. I still want to buy beautiful things and collect beautiful things, but I don't want that to be the only thing in my life is like this mega makeup collection, but nothing else. You know what I mean? Number eight, do you buy more during the holidays? Honestly, I feel like I've bought less this holiday season only because I want to have money to spend on my friends and family. My husband, of course, I want to be able to get him some cool gifts for Christmas time. So I've definitely dedicated more time to buying gifts for my friends and family this holiday season. And honestly, I think you should too. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say about that that's not judgment it's just uh you know words of wisdom like it's so much more fun to give than to receive and so yeah just it's just gonna be an awesome holiday season I think number nine have you ever hidden a makeup purchase from family or friends yeah <laughs> so this worked out really great for me back in the day because my husband didn't used to work with me so I would just have makeup delivered to my office and then I would take it out of the box put it in my purse come home hide it in my beauty room and he was none the wiser now all of my Sephora orders and stuff come to the office and then like there was one day Rel was like in my office and somebody came up to me and they're like look Karen you got a package from Sephora and I'm like <sighs> I'm like, why? Why do people do this to me? Like, fucking just hide it. Like, you don't need to bring it to my office and deliver it to me in front of my husband. Like, god damn it. So, I try to train people at work to be, like, a little more covert about my Sephora addiction. But, yeah, I've definitely tried to hide makeup from Rel. And when my parents are visiting, my mom's always, like, she's watching me. You know what I mean? <laughs> Number 10, do you have more than 10 products in your collection that you have not used in over a month? Yeah, definitely, definitely more than 10 products. Number 11, have you ever been pressured to purchase something you could not afford or did not need? Um, I think so. I think for makeup, yeah, it does happen sometimes. I can't like off the bat think of something that I couldn't afford that I felt pressured to buy, but definitely makeup that I didn't need, I've definitely bought, you know, for shits and giggles. Or I was like, oh, I could do a review on that, but nothing really like that really, really strikes me um, as an example for that question. So I'm sure I probably felt pressure to buy stuff that I didn't need or couldn't afford, but nothing recent comes to mind. Number 12, do you purchase makeup for collector reasons? I think so. I feel like my makeup collection is definitely not the biggest makeup collection out there. Have you guys seen, uh, Je her name is Jessica. She is from Sweden and she has this like eyeshadow palette collection. I think she did like, I don't even know how many parts she did to her eyeshadow palette collection and it was like, I was just watching it in awe because I'm like, 
oh my gosh, like her collection is huge. It's huge. It's like a makeup museum in there. And some people like um, the Fancy Face has an amazing collection. Mine, you guys, I do try to declutter. That's just how I've been raised. My mom never wanted to keep stuff that she didn't use in our house. Like she was very good about not being a hoarder and she's kind of passed that on to me. So when I look at my palettes, I'm like, Yep, I love all those palettes and if there's something that I don't love or I'm not going to use and I feel like I can resell or give away so somebody else can find happiness and joy, then I do that because I don't need to have like shelves and shelves of eyeshadow palettes to feel good about myself, but I do collect special ones like of course I don't ever see myself getting rid of my Pat McGrath palettes. I have some you know, give me glow palettes I love. I have a lot of the ABH palettes, so I do collect things like that, but it's definitely not part of like my makeup DNA to keep things for years and years and years that I won't use. Okay, the last question. In your makeup journey, have you become less or more consumeristic? So I think that I definitely started off like medium and then it like skyrocketed to being very consumeristic and now I feel like I'm mellowing out. It's got to do with probably like age and just realizing like you know there's got to be more to life than just like buying all the makeup and making YouTube videos. I still love YouTube. It's definitely like my biggest passion but like I said I want to do other things. I want to travel. I want to be able to buy my husband nice gifts. I want us to you know hopefully someday get a bigger house. I want to get a nicer car. Like I have other goals that I want to accomplish and so for all those reasons for all those reasons, I'm definitely finding it more important to manage what I spend and I want to spend more time using the beautiful things I have that I've collected and also when I get something new, I want to be able to review it. I want to show you guys multiple looks like those things I can't do right now because I just have so many palettes to get through. So those are some things that have become really important to me and I help, feel like they are helping me kind of become less consumeristic. So hopefully you guys see that change. I hope you guys, you know, embrace that change and same for you guys, you know, wherever your life takes you, like just embrace, embrace it. Don't fight it, enjoy it. You only get one and it's too short to, you know, spend it all on makeup. And I think that's okay that I say that out loud. If you guys disagree, I would love to hear your comments down in my comment section. But that is everything. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I thought the questions were really, really fun. Way to go, 90s love child. You killed it on this tag. I hope you guys also film this video. If you are YouTube creators, I do tag you. And I will leave the questions in the description box if you don't have a YouTube channel. Just pick a question and answer it. It's always fun to hear you guys' thoughts on these kinds of videos as well. Thank you for watching. I will see you in my next video soon. Bye, guys!